Um, my journey with Mr. Mark Medoff began in spring of 2015, maybe earlier than that. Um, basically, um, the agency in which I was represented with, uh, they also represented his daughter, Jessica, who is an incredible singer, amazing actor. Again, she's been, you know, um, in the industry along with her father for, you know, her whole life, basically. And um, my agents at the time knew that Mark was, you know, working on some pieces. And they just kind of were like, hey, you know, putting out the feelers. If you, you know, ever do any table reads or anything like that, will you just look at our client roster first? So Mark had been working on a script um, approximately, I guess, for almost like about seven years, six, seven years. And it's always interesting when a playwright or anybody who writes anything, it's like the first time um, you get to, you, you're ready for it to be heard, you know. So Mark, I guess, after all this time, was ready to sit down and hear his work out loud. Because, I mean, it's where the process kind of, I guess, really kicks off and begins um, with creating a new piece. But... Uh, it was a, a play about um, Marilyn Monroe and a woman named Lena Pepitone, who was Marilyn's teamstress and her confidant and best friend for the last six years of her life. And the, uh, the piece was based on a series of um, actual live interviews from Lena Pepitone herself, who was very good friends with the, pro uh, the head producer on the project, Dennis D'Amico. And uh, so with that, these series of interviews, Mark then adapted and created this really, really epic piece about the relationship between these two women. Um, and I, they were looking, he was looking for a Marilyn, and my um, my managers knew that it's kind of, the blonde bombshell is my wheelhouse, but in such a weird way where I just do musical theater. So I always, you know, play, you know I did Amber and Hairspray, and I played all woods, and like, you know, just, you know, Adelaide and Guys and Dolls, and Lily Sandy, just so like, my, my bombshellness was always in a very, you know, I've always been a very strong actor, but I just migrated towards the musical theater side versus the straight play side. And um, basically, I met with Dennis D'Amico in a, my manager's office, and we chatted, and and he, that was my audition, <laughs> which was crazy, because I was going to be sitting down reading this brand new work by a Tony Award winning Oscar nominated playwright, and it was really one of the most amazing little breaks in my life and something very different because I didn't have a very, very heavy acting, you know, foundation. And Mark is, a, writes some heavy acting. So I knew I was in for a life-changing experience, let alone how life-changing it turned out to be. Yeah, long story short, I did this table reading. I don't think I've ever been so nervous in my entire life. Um, I pretty much sweat through every article of clothing I was wearing. Um, it was three acts long, so it was a very long show. Um, and I remember the next day, um, Mark gave me a call, and he's like, hey, come meet me at my hotel. And I said, okay, and I'm so nervous. I've never been so nervous, because I wanted it. I wanted to, this, to do this show and have this challenge more than anything, and we went for a walk, you know, around the block. And Mark is, you know, he passed at 79, so this is me, you know, this is five years ago, four years ago. Um, and we went for a walk, and, and he's like, I'm, I'm going to give you this opportunity. And the rest is kind of history. You know, I, we, I spent six months preparing physically, um, emotionally, mentally, and the amount of drafts and scripts and cuts and changes. I mean, he was straight up like, tell me you're a fast study, because he did. He, he changed stuff, like, you know, in the middle, piecing everything together. It was a, a massive collaboration. And... Um, my my co-star on the piece, um, Lena, she's an LA-based actress. She's brilliant. Um, she worked on some films for Mark before. She was brought in, and and she was, I was humbled to be against her because she was just she was the rock, and I was, you know, luckily my playing Marilyn was a very emotional <laughs> experience anyway. But um, it was very he was a, such an collaborative man, and there was the the magic behind creating and helping develop a script with him was that it wasn't just us being told what to say, it was him getting it out of us as an actor to help write the, write the show. And there were many times where he would just have us live in the moment and improvise because he knew he needed to fix it and he knew we could help fix it. It was just it was really, it was trusting. He, he was more than a director, he was more than a writer. He, he became a father to me, you know. It was um, definitely put me through some serious tough love because 
the piece challenged me. You know, I, a lot of, you know, straight actors, you know, know what they're signing up for, but I did musical theater, and one of the first questions they asked me was like, how do you feel about nudity? And I said, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> so, you know, uh, and he did, he, he pushed me like no other, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity that he did, because it, it changed me as a person and an actor, and he was an incredible mentor. Incredible. I had to trust in him and trust in the process, and it was really, a lot of times, I wouldn't even know what he was talking about. Because he's just such a genius of the, of the written and spoken word that I would just uh, sit there and just try to like watch him and I'd, I'd be in complete awe. So it was sometimes it was sometimes just a, a magical experience. And then when I was having a really hard time with scenes, you know, I definitely threw some temper tantrums and he'd be like, you know, put your big girl pants on, get back, get back in there. He definitely <laughs> cursed me out a couple of times. <laughs> But um, that was that tough love that made me like pony up, and and uh, it was just really amazing to sit there and watch him. We do rewrites at his house, and we just all sit around his laptop and all with script version eight. I think I've eighteen versions of the script. I'm not even joking. Um, and then even from when we did the out of town, when we workshopped the show out in Las Cruces, New Mexico, where is his home base and his family is. And, um, you know, he's, he's a professor at the university and has been teaching for years. He's got so many students. It's incredible. Um, we were out there, and then we did four weeks of developing the show and then seven performances. And even in the middle of Friday afternoon, called us all over, and we redid the ending. And so I had a different ending Friday night. <laughs> so it's definitely, you know, it was just, but you, I trusted him, and I knew he, he, I was in amazing hands, and I just, I was constantly in awe of, of him as me human being and an individual and how compassionate and loving he was. He loved me like a daughter. It was, mm. it was beyond, um, a, a, a director's not like that, you know, it was more than that. How do you think he would want to be remembered or his family would want him to be remembered? I mean, he is being remembered and he's, um, he's a legend. He's a legendary playwright. He's one of the, the best, you know, within the last couple of decades and the work that his work speaks for itself. Um, getting him getting to have a revival of Lesser God on Broadway last year was awesome. It was awesome, and I'm so glad he had that. And you know, his legacy will live on with with his students, with people like me who truly treasured every moment with him and got to be a part of his process. And um, I think he will definitely be carried on through his amazing family. His family's unreal, and his um, every single one of his students who he made family. So I'm, I'm proud to be part of this record. <laughs>